Good day, sir and everyone. We are from Group Typo. In this video, we are going to do our presentation on our project, which is College Room Application System. My name is Tan Chong Ling. My name is Yo Kai Xiang. My name is Ong Shi Bing. And my name is Fang Wenji. Okay, let's get started. Okay, now I will explain about the structure of our application. So this is the front end. So here we have a core module, uh, which mainly consists of uh, authentication and authorization services. So here we use JWT for this authorization. And here we have modules. And in these modules, we have a lot of modules uh, files, for example, application. So inside this module, we have a lot of pages. So uh, the next one is a shared module. So in this shared module, we have a shared components here. So we have headers at the shared component and models, model classes. So here we declare all the model uh, classes as an interface to be used by uh, the modules and the service. So here services we have, uh, for example, user service, which uh, make connection to the uh, back end using HTTP. And also we have uh, application service, college service, and room service. So other than service, uh, we have the, the entry point, which is our uh, app component, which is our entry point to the application. Okay, now I will explain about the back end structure of our application. So for this application, we use SMSJS for the back end and uh, SQL database. So here uh, in the CS is, uh, is our entry point for our back end. So here we can see uh, different routes for different modules. So each of the route is declared here. Uh, for example, application, we have get request, post request, put request. So all the requests is handled by the controller class. So here we can see uh, different controller class for each of the modules. And inside this controller class, we have uh, methods to handle different uh, routes. And other than controller, we have model class here. So this model class will make the connection and also queries to the uh, SQL database. And also we have middleware function here. So for the off middleware, we have a special uh, middleware class for it. And also image outlook middleware. So this middleware is consumed by uh, different routes here. For example, user of middleware is consumed by this uh, application JS. Okay, now I will explain about the coding of the login and the uh, registration, which is the authorization module. So here we have the call uh, folder here and all service inside here. So in this project, we use JWT token for the authorization. So when the user is logging, uh, we will save the token in the local storage, which is here. And then when the user is logged out, we, we will remove the token from the local storage. So every HTTP request sent in this uh, application will be added a uh, authorization bearer token, which is the JWT token. For the entry point of our application, we will subscribe to this uh, user sus subscription. So when the user is logging as student, we will be redirected to the student homepage. And user is logging as admin, we will be redirected to the admin page. So if, if the user is not logging, uh, then the user will be redirected to the home page. So at the back end, we have a route for the authorization and the authentication. So in this route, we have login and register uh, endpoint. So this endpoint is uh, controlled by the off controller. So we have a uh, login, register, and validate duplicate uh, middleware. So here, we declare the uh, controller class, and inside this class, we have three methods, which is login, uh, validate, duplicate, and register. So this controller class will have all the business logic here. So here we use the uh, user models. So let's just see the user models. So in this model, we declare all the methods that are related to the database.
for example get all the users uh, get user by id and so on so for the uh, authorization we have a special middleware function which manages the authorization so since we are using uh, jwt so uh, this middleware will extract the JWT token from the header and then validate whether the uh, token is uh, validate or not. So if the token is not validate, uh, we will send the uh, response here, 401, which is unauthorized. And if the uh, JWT token is validate but the user is not, uh, not allowed to access the endpoint, we will send 403, which is forbidden. Now we proceed to the code structure for college and room management. So over here, there are two modules that are used in the management, which are college and also room. So this module will refer to the services, which are college service and also room, room service. So this will get the data from backend and display it to the components. So these two modules will also use the models, which are college model and also room model for better data structuring. For the backend code, there are two route files that we use for the room and college management. So which are college and also room. So route will provide the URL to the front end for the API communication. So this route will access the college and also room controller. So this two controller will also access to the model, which are college and also room. The models will connect to the database for the SQL query operation. So that insert, delete, update okay so now i'm going to talk about the code of my part so we start with backend first so at the index.js uh, it will call the application first declare the application routes to call the rest service on dealing with the application table in our database so this will lead us to the application route uh, as you can see from here so at here we have different types of method such as get put host to do different types of operation on the application table. So here, it will then lead us to the controller, application controller.js. So here, here are the uh, functions to call the application model. So here we have the get all application, current application, history, and also update. So all of the, all of the functions will lead us to the models, and which is the application model. So at here, for each of the function, it will call different types of SQL to do different types of operation on the application table in our database. So that's all for the backend. Okay, so then we proceed to the front end. So just now we have already defined the REST service for the application. So now at the application service.ts, we can call the service using the uh, use by calling the URL for different types of service. So here we have get current application list, get application history, which call different types of URL, and also update application, which call this type of URL and put method, and with this and by getting this body. Okay, so this is the application.ts, which is the which is storing the uh the attributes for the application. So you can see from here, uh, name, ID, and so forth. So this is the admin application component.html, which stores the, which display the elements, which display the application that call from the application service. So we are using the material table to display the component. And at the application.component.ts, you can see that on init, it will call the service to get the current application list. And also on approve and on our proof, it will do the operation, which is the update application, whether it's approved or unapproved. So if after the uh, after the service is called, it will call the snack bar to show that it approved successfully or unapproved successfully. 
So for the application history, we also same, we use the material table to display the history, the application history. And at the component.ts, you know, there's only one uh, method which is on init. So this will call the application service to get the application history list so that it can be displayed on the HTML page. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about the code. And the part that I'm responsible with is the student application college, student application history, student application room, and also student home component. So basically in every component, we need to use the service that we have created. For example, in this student home component, we are using this user service and we are calling the get current user from this user service. So as you can see in this get current user, we are using the HTTP and we'll get, we're using the get method. And this get method will bring us to the back end, which is inside the user.js. So in this router, there's this get method that we are that we use just now and we need to call the get user function of this user controller and this will bring us to the user controller and in this user controller this is the get user function and you can see that it leads us to the user model and inside the user model we need to call this get by id function and we are passing a user id into it inside this method we are using the database querying by querying the SQL that we have created. And then we'll pass the data that we get from the SQL to the front end. So after we have returned the data to the front end, we will receive them by creating an attribute inside the component. And then we can use them inside the HTML by displaying them. So basically every component has almost the same steps we, where we call the services that needed. For example, here we are using, we are calling the application service. After recording the service, sometimes we need to process them before we display them in the HTML. For example, here, we need to call the college service to get all the colleges. And then we need to call the room service by passing in unique college ID to get the room list for, the, for a certain college. And then we need to process the data inside it. So here we need to calculate the available space, the total available space for a college by adding all the spaces from each room inside the college. And then we will proceed to the HTML and display them. So here, here's, so this is a table where we, where we get a data source of colleges and then we will display the college name, the space left inside the college and the operation. Okay, now I will demonstrate the login and registration. So first, uh, the default admin credential is admin for the username and also admin for the password. So let me demonstrate login as admin. So when successful login, uh, the page will be redirected to the admin homepage. So now I will demonstrate the user uh, for the student. So before the student can login, they need to register an account. So let me type the username, password, and email, and full name, as well as metric number. So this registration uh, module uh, will compare the metric number and the username, as well as email, so that uh, there are no duplicate uh, this field in the database. So I click the register button. The metric number already exists, so I cannot create the account with the same metric number. So I need to change and then username already exists. So this username is already exists in the database. So I need to use another username. Okay, so I register success and auto automatically log in as a student. Okay, now I will demonstrate the profile page of the student. So here we can see the profile page of the student. So the top here, we can change the profile image of the student. For example, I choose this image and then click the save button and the profile page will be updated. So here we also can change the password. You need to type the correct uh, old password and then type the new password and click update password. So we can see the success message at the bottom. And uh, finally, we can change our full name or our email here. So let me change my email and also uh, my full name. 
and then save. So we can see update success at the bottom. So now I will continue for college and room administration. So now we log in, log in as admin and press login. Now we go to a college tab and you can see this is the managed college page with the college list. So we can add college here. So now I type KDSE and the college address. So I press submit here. So now the newly added college is displayed. And we can also edit the college information. Maybe change it to capital letter and update. So the changes is made here. And we can also delete the added college. Yeah, that's okay. The college has been deleted successfully. So now we can also view the room list for each of the college. So when I, once I press the view room, we can see the managed room page here. So same as the college, we can also add room. So maybe the room number and select the room type. So if I click double, the capacity will become two. If I click one of the single room, either single without room, toilet or single with toilet, the capacity will be the same, which is one. So now I choose for double and click submit. So the newly added room is displayed here. I can also edit the room, maybe changing the room name and also changing the room type and then update. And you can see the update has been made here. And you can also delete the room. So for the activation here, you can see if it is activated, you can press to deactivate the room. And also you can activate the deactivated room here by pressing the activate button. If the room is deactivated, the room will not be displayed on the student page. Okay, now I will be demonstrating the process of a student apply for a college. And this is the student homepage and there's a navigation bar at the top and student can proceed to any page that they want through this navigation bar. And first we will look at the application history since there's no application yet. So no data will be displayed and we can click on the apply now button to apply for college. So displayed are the college application page and here are all the colleges available in the university and here are the spaces left for the corresponding college. If the space left is zero, so the student will not be able to select this college and we will proceed to select the KTDI. And here are all the rooms available in the college and the capacity we can see all them added together are four. So it's same with the spaces left we see just now, which is here. Okay, so we will try to apply for the for this room, room 201, and we click on apply and we confirm the application. So we will this it will display a sus apply success message. So if we go to the view application now, we can see that the record is here and the status will be pending and we will not be able to apply any more room now. And if we go to the college application page, you can see that there's a message that you have already applied a room. So we will not be able to select any of the room now. Okay, now I have already logged in into the profile of another student, which is Subing. And if we click on the apply now, and we can see that the space left for KDDF is only three because I've already applied for one room just now. And if we click into the college, we can see that the room 201 is not available anymore. So if the application is unapproved and we can see that the apply now button is now available and we can now apply for any colleges and the space, the space left has already become four, which is the original space left. And if you click on the application history, the status already become unapproved. So which means all the functions are doing good for now. Okay, so now I'm I'm going to talk about the application uh, handled by the admin. And this is the admin homepage. And when we click on the application, we can view the application list, which are the applications made by the students. So at here, we have currently have two applications made by two different students. One is user one and another one is Ong Shiling. 
So both of them met for the application for different room, but uh, same, the same college and their status is pending because they are waiting for our approval. So uh, when I approve this application, so it will show a statement that the application is approved successfully and the student is no need to apply for another room. So if I unapprove this application, and there's a statement showing that unapproved successfully, and when I unapprove the application, the students will need to apply for another room again. So when I click on the view history button, you can see that these are the two applications that I approved and unapproved just now. So it will move to this uh, application history table. Okay, so that's all from our presentation. Thank you very much.